so I, welcome back everybody to another scripture and smoke today actually I'm not going to be reading any scripture what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to read a little bit from some early Christian writings so today is the feast of St. Joseph Martyr um, he was alive during the second century uh, and uh, I'm going to be reading a little excerpt from it's called his first apology uh, this is written anywhere between 153 AD and 155 AD, so quite a long time ago. And this is actually in regards to the Eucharist. So this is a very, very early account of the Eucharist. So this is actually from chapter 66 of his Apology. <clears throat> and this food is called among us the Eucharist, of which no one is allowed to partake, but the man who believes that that the things which we teach are true and who has been washed with the washing that is for the remission of sins. And unto regeneration, who so living as Christ has enjoyed. <clears throat> for not a common bread and a common drink do we receive these, but in like manner as Jesus Christ our Savior, having been made flesh by the word of God, had both flesh and blood for our salvation. So likewise have we been taught that the food, which is blessed by the prayer of his word, <clears throat> and from which our... Which our blood and flesh by transmission are nourished is the flesh and blood of that Jesus who has made flesh for the apostles and the memory is composed by them which are called gospels have thus delivered a, delivered unto us what was enjoyed upon them that Jesus took bread and we had given thanks said this do in remembrance of me this is my body and that after the same manner, having taken the cup and given thanks, he said, This is my blood, and given it to them alone, which the wicked devils had imitated in the mysteries of Matthias, commanding that the same thing be done. For that bread and cup of water are placed with certain incantations in the mystical rites of one who is being initiated, you either know or can learn. <clears throat> so as we see here, a very very early account of what happens during the mass at the at the consecration of the bread and the wine where they become Jesus flesh and blood <clears throat> and it's very you know Catholics who read this even the you know Orthodox as well or any of the other apostolic churches if they were to read this they would say oh that's exactly what happens because even here a very early account of what is taking place you know a lot of people will say well that's not scripture or that's not found in the Bible well I'd hate to say it the Bible as we know it wasn't composed or it wasn't uh, collected in the books that we have now until the 400s now by this time all of the writings for the scriptures have been written already but there was no composition of the Bible there wasn't they didn't have a New Testament at all by this point they had all the Old Testament writings all the pro all the prophets and you know the five books of Moses they had all those but it, as what is the New Testament they didn't have that compiled yet now all the right again all the writings were there but they weren't being read unanimously through all of the different communities at the time so you can't say oh it's not found in the Bible so you don't know it so you can't believe it's there well sorry the Bible actually wasn't composed at this time or it wasn't collected so that argument's kind of moot. But here we have an instance of what the Eucharist is, you know, and what Catholics and the other apostolic churches still believe that it is. You know, I'm talking about the Orthodox, and there's a few other smaller churches who uh, can um, trace themselves back to the apostles, but which the Catholic Church being the one true church, because we have Peter, or the chair of Peter, which is the Pope. But anyway, that's a whole other matter. But anyway, I just wanted to give a little different spin to today's uh, stuff. So, all right, I'll be back in a minute. All right, so for today, I have the Ezra Zion Eminence. All right, so what we got in here is, so it's a Mexican San Andreas Maduro wrapper. And then the binder and filler are both Nicaraguan. And he says the filler as well is age five to seven years. This will be interesting. And this is the grand Rebuso size. So five and a quarter by 50. So it's a nice little stick. Um, the wrapper is 
super, super dark. Almost like a dark chocolate color. Off the foot, I'm getting like it's a chocolate barnyard smell, if that makes any sense. Like barnyard, not, not like in a really bad sense of it, but that's what I'm getting on it. I'm going to take the foot band off here in a second. You know, it's fairly well constructed. There's a little hole right there. It's not really a hole, but it looks like it, looks like it got ripped a little bit, but not a big problem. And it looks like a triple cap. Fairly nicely done, but it's a little a little rough, but and the wrapper, I mean the you know, it's a fairly medium pack. It's not too heavy, but it's not super light. You can definitely see the seams in it. It's very lumpy, but again it's hand rolled. Here we can focus, you know, it's it is kind of lumpy, but oh well. Not really a big deal to me. So well let's go and get it cut up and lit up here. And I got a new lighter. So this is just a it's another four guy. It's very similar to one I had. This is much, much uh, better quality than one I had. So it's very hefty it's a lot more hefty and it works a little bit better. So I think it go a really big pepper kick. Very big, and it's like a cayenne pepper kick. With a little bit of chocolate in there. But it's about a medium right now, so I'm gonna go and get into it and I'll be back here in a bit to kinda let you know what I think, alright? Alright, I'm back, I'm about ten minutes in here about three quarters of an inch down so it's burning pretty well it's a little wavy but not really a big problem flavor is definitely full bodied strength I'd say is maybe about a medium it's not that strong of a cigar nicotine wise but flavor very very punchy so when I got off the get go that pepper is still there the kind of pepper is still very very dominating very very dominating there's a little bit of like a hay type of uh, taste to it as well as chocolate so chocolate hay cayenne pepper that's pretty much what I'm getting off of it so I will be back here when I'm done with the first third or halfway through it kind of depends on what's going on with it right see you in a bit all right so I am about 35 minutes in done with the first third the ash just fell off in a huge, huge chunk. Um, the spice has pretty much gone away. It's there a little bit. But now it's more of a sweet coffee and chocolate with a little bit of that hay type of flavor in there. You know, I don't want to say really manure, but barnyard kind of taste to it a little bit. But it's pretty good. The flavors are still very strong. Strength, again, is still really low. So I'd say the, the flavors are definitely a medium to full. And the sweetness is definitely on the aftertaste. You don't really get on the draw, but about 20, 30 seconds after you're, after you're done, 
you can taste this coating of sweetness in your mouth. So that's actually kind of, kind of nice. And it's not like a, it's very fleeting sweetness. It's not super strong and it's not artificial. It's more of just like, just a light coating of sweetness. So there we go. I'll be back here when I am getting through the second third, right? All right, so I'm an hour in here, getting close to the second, th being done with the second third. The flavors have changed again. Still, uh, that that sweetness is a little more prominent now, especially on the draw. Um, I'm starting to get like a wood in there. It's very light, so I'll call it a cedar. Um, and I'm still getting a bit of uh, chocolate, and there's a little bit of that spice in there, but not much. So it's it's developing more and more. So, I mean, this is definitely a transitional stick. You know, I, most of the stuff I tend to smoke generally aren't transitional. Um, it isn't, I don't like that. Just that's what I tend to gravitate towards, but it's actually just very nice because it's a little more complex. You know, there's different stuff going on within the stick. So I really got to kind of stick with it as I'm smoking it down. And actually I'll go ahead and take the band off while I'm here. And their bands are generally fairly nice, yeah. They're self-adhesing, so they come off very nice. And a big old, pretty looking band. As everybody can see there. It has their website on back. So you can see it. Ezra Zion. So. And again, the ash actually holds on really well for those. And again, the burn, it's not perfectly razor sharp, but I haven't had to correct it at all. So, burning very well. Break, see the ash, the ashes. I can get this thing to focus a little bit more. Yeah. The ash is very nice looking. It's not really flaky. It's a little windy out here, so I've been setting it down instead of pulling it like I normally do. But again, for Maduro, burning very, very well. So, I will be back here when I'm wrapping it up, all right? So I'm about an hour and a half in, getting down close to it, it's starting to get a little warm, so I'm going to finish up here in a few minutes, but um, just to recap, it's a very enjoyable stick, very transitional, different flavors all the way through, um, that wood has come back a little bit, uh, the kind of peppers there are a little bit still, um, a little bit of that sweet chocolate, and still a little bit of like earthy hay manure type of taste to it so very interesting mix very pleasant to smoke um i'd recommend picking one up it's definitely it's it's up there in power a little bit it has gone up a little bit from medium to medium full and strength wise flavor it's all the way there again it's still medium medium full that's the way it's uh, sucked through through the entire uh, stick um definitely a keeper i want to i'll probably go and pick a few of these up uh at some point in time. They retail at my store for like ten fifty. You can find them online for like eight seventy five, I think, from Cigar Federation. But when you pay for shipping, you know, you're probably gonna be paying that anyway. Uh, but again, I'm in Indiana, so depending on where you're at, your tax could be different. So it might be a little bit worth it ordering online. But always re remember to support your local store. Very, very important. But um anyway, this was Ezra Zion Eminence, Grand Toro. Um I thank you. Go and subscribe. Uh, visit my Facebook, or if you're seeing this on Facebook, go to my YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube. Um, I'm going to be trying to do videos a little more often, special reviews as well. Um, I'll be pinning up a video here. It'll definitely be up before this one, but I'm actually trying to use some, use some nice edit software. I'm going to be, I'm using Adobe, Adobe Premiere. It took me a while to figure it out, but I think I just about got it, so the video editing quality will be a little bit better. I'm going to try to put some other pictures and stuff in there. So, again, thank you, everybody. God bless, and have a good, good day.